Hi, here we are again to talk about uh, Xcode and this to-do app that we've been building. And uh, so far we've got a sort of a demo app. Um, it works like this. I can launch it here and it's got a list of to-do items and you can check them off or uncheck them. And then you can add a new to-do item by clicking the button here. So we'll call it new to do, won't spell it right, and then uh, save it, and then you can see the new to do appears on the list, and we can check it off. Um, right now, these to do items are just held in RAM, okay? So that's the read or the random access memory, right? Um, and what that means is, if this app were to quit, we, you know, we would lose all of the to do items. And the fact that we have these to-do items here to begin with when, uh, when the app is opened is just because the app adds those when you load it the first time. So, you know, if we look under, um, you know, View Controller Swift, um, or maybe it's under, um, actually, maybe it's in this to-do manager over here, right? Yeah, so under to-do manager here, you can see, like, we've added these, these extra to-do items here. So, so really, we don't want to do that. We want to have people add to-do items to the app and if the app quits, we want the app to be able to open up and remember the to-do items that you added to it, right? And to do that, what we're going to use is we're going to use a system called Core Data. And if you recall, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a <coughs> I'm going to make a new file just to show you. Um, you won't really need to make a new file if you've already made one. But if I make a new Xcode project and I go to Single View Application, and I check the box here that says Use Core Data right then this project will be using core data i'm going to cancel out because i did that step already okay in this project and if your app uses core data what you'll have is you'll have this um, file here called um, name of app dot xc data model d okay and when we select that it, it looks like this and this essentially is showing us what our app looks like you know it's kind of like what the data in our app looks like actually your app might look more like this the entity may not be there um, we can add new entities with this right but anyway anyway it'll look something like this right and uh, entities in this in this xc model data um, act a lot like classes except they're saved to a database and the the app persists them. In other words, you know, every time you close the app, you can open the app and then grab the information from the database and recreate the objects that it represents, okay? Or that those 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 entries in the database represent, right? So so anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to set our app up to use core data, okay? So here we are. Um, if you have your app and you and it's working with core data, you'll have this to do app XC model data at the bottom, right? And what I want you to do is, is select this and then click on this button down here called <coughs> Add Entity, okay? And when I do that, you can see it adds an entity up here at the top, and you can double-click that to give it a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it To Do, okay? That's actually the same name as our class over here. We'll take a look at it, right? So our To Do class. It's class to do, and it has two properties, name and completed. So essentially, we're going to make um, an entity in core data that, that models this class, okay? So entities in core data can have um, what are called attributes, and attributes are analogous to um, the properties that are assigned to classes, okay? So an entity is pretty much just like a class. It's very similar. It's a little bit different, but it's, it's very similar um, to the classes you create, and they can have attributes instead of properties. So attributes are very similar, right? So let's uh, let's click on this, and we can add an attribute to the to do entity by clicking the plus button here, and I'll call this one name, and then we can give it a type also, just like you would give a type to a property in your class, right? I'll set the the type of the name to a string, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus button here, and I'll add another property called completed. Okay? And then I'll set the type of completed to a Boolean. Okay? So this is pretty much the same things that we have in the to-do model over here. Okay? So, uh, so anyway, so we've got that. That's working pretty good so far, right? Hopefully, right? Um, 
Well, it was pretty easy to do anyway, right? So we have these things. And now what I want to do is I want to make a class or a class file to represent these this this to do entity and its attributes. And so that that class is going to be similar to what we have here. The thing is we'll have to delete this to do class because we're not going to use this. We're we're essentially going to replace this with the new class that we create. Okay? And you you know there isn't much code here, so you could save this file if you want, but you know you could pretty much write that again yourself in in a minute. So why don't we just delete it and send it to the trash? Okay? And then if you have to make it again, you know what, it'll be better the second time. So just have no regrets, so you can just delete that, okay? So anyway, so here we are. So how do we make a new um, class to represent this entity, right? There, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, the easy way to do it is to select the entity here and go to the, um, the editor menu and choose Create NS Managed Object Subclass. And this is what um, entities need to be, right? That was just a regular, you know, Swift class. Entity, uh, an entity in our core data, you know, database needs to be a subclass of NS managed object. Okay, so I'll choose this, and then it's going to walk me through the process of creating this file. So it says, okay, select the models that you want to use, or select them the the data model you want to use. So it's this thing. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's do the to-do app data model. And then it'll say, hey, select the entities you want to manage. Well, I want to manage the to-do entity. That's that guy. And then it's going to say, okay, well, where do you want to save these files at? Okay. And then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the language is Swift. The option down here, uh, use scalar, scalar properties for primitive data types is checked. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to um, allow us to use the Boolean as a Boolean. If we don't check this box, it will treat the Boolean as a, um, as a number, right? Uh, like a 1 or a 0 rather than a, than a true or false, which is very similar, but then it makes our coding a little more work. Um, the one bummer is if we check this box, if we use the date um, attribute, the, a, a date type for the attribute, then it treats the date as a number instead of like a date object, which is rather frustrating, right? Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, you know, so I'll show you how to handle dates later, but I, I think that this was the easier way is to handle the Booleans this way. So anyway, um, we've got that, and then we want to make sure that the target of our app is checked. So you got your app name here, and it, the, the box is checked. So we'll click Create, and, uh, and then it makes us two new files here. Um, I'm not quite sure why it makes two files. I think you can combine these into the same file, but when you have it, when you have the editor menu do it, it makes you two files. And you know, if we look at the first file, you can see it says class to do, very similar to the old one. And there's no properties listed here, but it does have the subclass of NS managed object. Okay, then and that's key for this to work, right? It's got to be an NS managed object, right? And then above that, it gives us an extra file, and the property names are are um, added here, and you can see this is an extension of the to-do class. So when you add an extension, you're just adding extra features to an existing class, and um, you know, so so they just kind of divided it up into two files. Um, we could have taken this and put it in here, and it would work the same way. Um, but but anyway, so here's the to-do extension, and then you can see it's got uh, you know a, a property called name and a property called completed, and um, these are NS managed, so they need to have this little, you know, feature in front to to describe them as NS managed, right? So that's another little difference. But otherwise, really, it's not too much more code than what we had when we created the original to do object. Okay, so anyway, so there we go. Um, you know, if we just stop here and we test our project, you know, if I try and build, I just did a command B, right? Um, I'm going to get some errors, and the reason I'm going to get errors is because the the new to do items work a little differently than the old ones. So we're going to have to, um, you know, work uh, work on the to do manager code, right? So let me explain. Um, we'll do that in another video, but let me just explain what's going on here. So um, we can't we can't invoke this initializer because our new class doesn't have this initialize with name anymore. So we got an error there, right? And then when we try and append and build the items here, it's not going to work for the same reason, okay? Also, we'll want to grab the data from the database every time our app loads up so that we're grabbing that persistent data that we're saving, right? So we'll need to do that. And then every time you edit a managed object, you need to tell the database to save it so that it gets put in the store where, you know, where it can be retrieved, 
you know, in the future, right? So there's a couple steps that we need to add. Um, it's not too much work. Um, luckily, though, we organized all of the um, all of the code that manages the to do items in our to do app is all in this uh, to do manager class. So so really, all the work that we're going to need to do is going to happen in in here. Okay. And there's really not a lot of code there anyway, so we're just going to add a little bit of a little bit of extra code here and and fix a few things. So so anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you got this all set up correctly. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll make use of this in the next video. Okay.